स्वभावचिन्मयानंदम कृपा पूर्णम जगत्पति हरिषडवर्गजेतारम नित्यानंद गुरुं भजे द मोर यू स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग in the understanding that's what i am saying see for intellectual logical mind the nitya sutras which you internalize and which you may need to practice constantly will appeal what you hear has to be remembered and has to be practiced this is nitya sutras second dhyana sutra here internalize at particular time of your day particular part of your day you need to sit and dedicate devote yourself for it this will appeal for a different kind of seekers seekers who are not just logical who are balanced logical and little emotional too who are different kind of a beings for them this kind of sutras will work and the third it is amazing this sutras will work for everybody all you need is when you understand and internalize you are not even needed to remember this technique no you are only needed to cooperate with the ecstasy happening in you you are not even needed to remember see even doing the ajapa japa means the remembering the mantra which is being repeated by your breath is nitya sutra means you have to remember and have the awareness towards it even ananda ganda understand even ananda ganda is a nitya sutra because you need to put your awareness at least in the initial level initial level even ananda ganda is a nitya sutra means you have to remember and bring your awareness to the ananda ganda and constantly try to be in that area but here mahadeva is giving you the real freedom tot total freedom he says since in truth bondage and freedom both are relative these words are only for those terrified with the universe is breaking the whole pot if you understand this sutra you don't need anything else you don't need actually anything else he says since in truth in reality in actual truth bondage and freedom are relative these words are only for those terrified with the universe he is telling only frightened fools seek enlightenment <laughs> he is completely breaking the pot he is completely opening he is taking us to a different level of understanding as long as you create questions verbally you do not understand you create the necessity for me to talk verbally as long as you need somebody to talk to you verbally you are creating bondage many people think only logical person can question only a person who has freedom or the uh, free way of thinking questions no understand questions arises in the mind which is a slave which is again and again asking for a master to answer verbally i have seen many people just by writing a very tough logical question they think they are independent individual thinkers especially the pseudo logical guys they really think 
by creating a strong intelligent question they are very logical independent intelligent free thinkers understand corruption and misunderstanding in any other field can be tolerated but not in the field of inner science not in the field of understanding about yourself because corruption and misunderstanding in the inner field will destroy the whole life ramakrishna says beautifully in eastern parts of india they'll use sesame seeds to drive the ghosts or the spirits which are possessing the human beings sometimes the ghosts are so intelligent they will go and catch sit inside the sesame seeds <laughs> if ghost is sitting on some person you can throw the sesame seed and drive him out if it is sitting inside the sesame seed what what will you do no you can't you can't drive the ghost from that person ramakrishna says same way if the misunderstanding and corruption is in some other part of the world you can use your inner clarity and throw them away but that misunderstanding or corruption is sitting inside your inner space then you are in difficulty then you are in big danger space dangerous place nothing can be done understand by creating strong logical so called individualistic questions do not think you are very sharp or independent free individual thinker no you are deeply enjoying being a slave without remembering or recognizing it as long as you need a verbal answer moment you create a verbal question you need a verbal answer communication means you are in need of a master you are a slave only a person who expresses his understanding he does not need communication he needs communion that's all many people come and sit just to be with the master as seen many people they come and sit they never put any question if you ask why you don't ask any question whatever now i since i had is answered i am full but i know he will take me to the deeper and deeper fulfillment so i am sitting here somebody is asking the true guru disciple relationship idea your information about guru disciple relationship please can you explain more there is no name this is what is exact guru disciple relationship if you are sitting here to get answers to, for your question still we have only teacher student relationship not guru disciple suddenly you will see some strong clicks and understandings has happened in you and your whole life is at already fall falling in tune are put in tune with that understanding and whole day a unique discipline has arisen awakened in your routine understand when i say unique discipline it is no way related to a routine like a morning you have to do nitya yoga morning you have to do nitya dhyan evening you have to do nitya aarti no i am not talking that i am not saying about that unique understanding means you yourself will feel completely comfortable like you will sleep when you want to sleep you will get up when you want to get up you will do your business when you want to do you will meditate when you want to meditate you will eat if you feel like eating you will rest you will feel like resting but you will see a kind of a unique settled feeling unique comfortable feeling neither you will sleep because you are sitting in, in your bedroom you are inside your bedroom you won't sleep just because you are inside your bedroom no 
You won't eat just because you are seeing the McDonald's tower. No. You won't pray only because you are seeing the temple tower. No. Remembering God only when you see the temple tower. Always thinking of eating whenever you see the McDonald's tower. Always thinking of lying down or resting whenever you see the advertisements for mattress. Or <laughs> the moment you get into the bedroom deciding to sleep is not the routine. No. That is not the routine which I am talking about. That may be called a medically disciplined routine. If you do all that, as per the doctor's advice, you may have health. I don't know about that. Doctors only decide. But what I am saying is the unique routine arising out of you by understanding. By understanding. And that releases tremendous energy in you. Understand? The unique discipline which arises out of understanding will be so beautiful. You don't have to imitate anybody's understanding. You don't have to imitate anybody's understanding. If you see, the understanding of Ramakrishna is so powerful, he slept in the same bed with Sharada Devi at least two years, but never, neither he nor she even had the thought of having physical relationship. And surely Sharada Devi was very pretty. Very pretty and very young. In 45, if you see her photograph, the first photograph you will see, her photograph is 45. And very wonderful lady, both of them are staying together. It's not that I am asking you to work for that understanding. No, I am not asking you. It should be the same in you. No, out of their understanding it happened. Understand the difference between the discipline arising out of the click, the initiation, and the discipline arising out of somebody telling you or you reading. One more thing. If you start seeking for enlightenment or ultimate truth because I told you or you read in some books, you are only in the initial level. Okay, nothing wrong, but only in the initial level. But you yourself got the curiosity. I think I should see inside me and do some repair work. I should do some more clearing work. Then the seeking starts. Only then the morality or the unique discipline which I am telling starts raising in you. Starts raising in you. Ramakrishna's discipline is complete, perfect, total, because it arose out of his own clarity, not because somebody told him, somebody made him, somebody was watching him. No. No. In the initial level, if Somebody telling and you listening and it starts the spark is okay. But that is not going to be the life. That should not be the life. I have seen people who try to get little seeking or the enlightenment interest because of my initial thing. They try to get. But they don't go deep or do any spiritual practice. Slowly, if the relationship between me and them, if that is not kept alive, if that is little low, the connection is little low, suddenly I see, they, they start saying, no, I am not interested in enlightenment, seeking spirituality, forget about it. It means what? It has not become part of them. Unless it becomes part of you. And you yourself get that curiosity. Nothing much can happen inside you. 
when that curiosity starts happening in you, when the understanding is applied every moment in you, the energy which gets released inside your system, any disciplined life based on understanding releases tremendous energy in you. It's a scientific fact. That energy awakens the non-mechanical parts of the brain means bringing more awareness. That awakening of the non-mechanical parts of the brain only brings tremendous ecstasy into your system. The system is now getting trained to have more and more ecstasy, more and more joy. If you are living in a routine which is forced on you, which has not become your click or understanding, that kind of a routine will lead you to more and more dullness. More and more dullness. I am afraid the so-called developed Indian cities are falling into that. They do not understand the routine which has not become your internal click will lead you to depression. Unless some method of psychological revolution is brought and the routine which they are required to follow matches with their understandings about life, people cannot come out of depression. You may add more and more and more medication equal to food. Sometimes the quantity of food and medication almost is same. In Ayurveda, we say that food should be like a medicine, but people have misunderstood. <laughs> medicine has become like a food. You may add any amount of, any quantity of medicine into your system, you will not be able to get out of the depression because the routine is not happened because of your internal understanding. Tapas means sacrificing things without bothering when your internal understanding is trying to set a new routine and trend to your body. When you add this internal understanding, to your life, you will suddenly see your day-to-day -day routine is little disturbed. It becomes little chaos. And if you try to build your whole day based on this internal understanding, naturally for a few months you may not be able to do your regular job, regular routine, whatever you are doing. But having courage to go through the disturbance, to go through the chaos, and settling on the internal understanding permanently, strongly establishing yourself strongly on that understanding, courage to go through this chaos is what I call tapas. Have courage, nothing wrong. Few months, if it is completely shaken, okay, take leave, take off, call sick, otherwise you will be sick. <laughs> Better <laughs> call sick and let that understanding churn you. I tell you, surely you will see a new beautiful routine arising out of that understanding. Happening out of that understanding. And non-mechanical parts of your brain will be awakened. That is what I mean when I say in the dreams you will remember very clearly the great ideas and teachings which you heard and became part of you. If you heard, remembered my teachings at least few times in your dreams, the non-mechanical parts of your brain has already awakened. The awakening has started. The other day, one person was telling me, Swamiji, I saw in the dream that some animals are chasing me 
and in the dream also suddenly i remembered my mala and held the mala and remembered you the dream disappeared what's the meaning of this i said i do not know the mystical or these that meanings one thing i can tell the non mechanical parts of your brain is awakened and your path is devotion if you remember my words and teachings and understanding which came to you through me then your path is intellectual if you are if you remember the teachings and understandings which you heard got from me in the dream your path is jnana yoga add more and more understanding if you remember just my very being as a divine in the dream then your path is bhakti yoga awakening the non mechanical parts of the brain is what we call in sanskrit pratyagatma chaitanya jagratam this is what you expected to have you are expected to have this awakening of non mechanical parts of your brain between the age of 7 and 14 according to vedic tradition between the age of 7 and 14 the gayatri mantra is supposed to do this job gayatri is given to you to awaken the non mechanical parts of your brain so that you will have that unique discipline arising out of you unique discipline happening out of you unique understanding happening out of you then by 14 the energy which is awakened the non mechanical parts of your brain will try to settle with the body by the time you become physically mature already your system is tuned trained to continuously enjoy the inner ecstasy and bliss so you are balanced now you have strong clear tools to enjoy the inner world live with yourself and the outer world live with one person that is what we call living together as son now it is not living together living together <laughs> living to gather means even if you two persons are living together constant loneliness is there there is a constant loneliness you are still thinking to gather something more some more people some more relationships some more things into your life the extra marital relationship happens because you are feeling lonely even while you live together you are not living together you are living to gather <laughs> you will be surprised how in the traditional indian lifestyle even few hundred years ago people lived happily with one person understand i have seen at least two cases and i have heard at least 25 to 30 cases 100 year old the man will pass away within 3 hours the lady she will pass away if you go to your native villages you will hear these stories understand passing away cannot happen just by shock just by simple shock the person will not die and especially after 100 years why she will die if he dies but see they live together that is why they are very clear yes now it is time let both of us leave the body if you go back to your village and sit with the elderly ladies and talk at least two stories you will hear i know for sure means they lived together the living together was lifestyle was lifestyle understand that happens only when both the persons non mechanical parts of the brain is awakened if both beings non mechanical parts of the brains is awakened 
you will also be constantly settling with your ecstasy. She will also be constantly settling with her ecstasy. Even if you share each other, you will be sharing your ecstasy. Constantly you will be radiating it. The other day, I was reading an article. In Bangalore, the divorce rate is 33%. I was shocked. 33%. What is happening to India? God. Leading. Now the metropolitan cities are leading in divorce rate. 33%. And the whole thing has started raising only in last 10 years. After IT revolution. Now really... Now the reason, you know, these are all the great side effects of the IT revolution. Understand? The reason, the main reason is, their routine is not happening after their psychological revolution. Understanding? The hardware is forced to do something for which software is not even, forget about training, not even taught. The software does not know why it should do, does not have any justification why it should do, but the hardware is made to do. That kind of routine leads to more and more dullness. So instead of awakening the non-mechanical parts of the brain, even the mechanical parts of the brain starts dying. Then you carry the constant depression and dullness in you, and you share that only. When you hug the other person, when you touch the other person, you just pour the depression, that dullness. So naturally, you are living together, not together. The dissatisfaction arises. That dissatisfaction leads to all kinds of fight. One important thing when that kind of a dullness and depression happens, suddenly you will see, you will start feeling like your whole life is doomed. You will not understand, you will not think this will pass away. You will think, I cannot imagine living with this guy whole life. I cannot imagine looking at the same person every morning. These kinds of thoughts will become stronger and stronger inside your system. I am talking about all this marriage thing because this person has questioned the centuries old custom in the Indian culture of surrendering choice of life. Sexual love made to parents is so powerful in affecting the consciousness in regards to surrender, connection, trust. I want you to understand Actually, this sutra and this question is very closely connected. That's the reason I'm working on this, both the question and sutra. Maybe today we will do just this sutra, because this sutra can reveal so much. We'll do just this one sutra. And after the break also, if you have questions just on this sutra, right, I'll try to answer. We will explore deeper and deeper just this sutra. Centuries old custom in that Indian culture of surrendering choice of life, sexual love mate to parents is so powerful in affecting the consciousness. I want you to understand the sexual love mate, choice of the sexual love mate is not surrendered to parents traditionally, it is surrendered to your own inner consciousness. Understand? It is surrendered to your own ecstasy, which is happening by awakening of the non-mechanical parts of the brain. Parents actually do a kind of a shortlisting. Only they do a kind of a shortlisting. It is actually the enlightened master. He matches and chooses and fits exactly. The, seeing the horoscope. In those days, the Astrology and horoscope will be studied by an enlightened being. Usually, 
every family will have an enlightened guru the kula guru fortunately all those kula gurus were enlightened here you are saying parents surrendering it to parents no it is not surrendered to parents even till 100 years ago even till 100 years ago it was surrendered to enlightened astrologer harasko person who reads the your kula guru kula guru is practically like a family psychiatrist and much more not just family psychiatrist much more he knows the whole family background he is enlightened he can give you the straight things which is needed solution he can look at the things in a very objective way so traditionally custom was surrendering that freedom to him not to the parents and one nice thing many parents were also enlightened many parents even though they never claimed or they never said see telling your enlightenment was not a lifestyle in our tradition it was not a lifestyle and actually even now there is one big tradition of siddha parampara believes not to speak about your personal spiritual experience to others they don't talk because now the number has become rare we need to inspire more and more people coming inside this tradition we are all made to tell talk just to inspire people otherwise traditionally they don't inspire they don't talk we know so many elders parents who can solve completely their problem and others problem and live in enlightenment living enlightenment they don't talk we had fortunately that kind of people that is why we surrendered everything to them and the funny thing first time both of them will meet only before tying the mangal sutra or the marriage ceremony some traditions only after mangal sutra is tied they will even remove that face veil so much of authenticity because both of them lived with the inner ecstasy both of them know very clearly the outer person is just there to share not to demand that is why you don't need to seek and search and date around see if it is a utility like a buying commodity you have to go around experiment find out and do people the other day one person was telling me what is this swami ji in india no freedom the parents choose the elders choose about the wife and husband is it not disrespect to the individual freedom we don't understand dating around choosing then marrying is the disrespect to the whole physical relationship means it is like commodity if you are buying a shirt you need to put it on and see because you are going to use that same way if you are dating around choosing and then selecting and marrying means you are going to use that person that person is going to be utility that is why you are so careful in the vedic marriage the person was not utility he was only a object on which you can pour your ecstasy he is only a object on whom you can train you can get trained to pour your compassion to open up to share the compassion with the whole world by 21 the person will be filled with overflowing ecstasy now he has to have the training of pouring that on one person so that within 50 he will be matured to pour it on the whole world to take vana prastha it's very beautiful first creating ecstasy and joy and awakening the non mechanical parts of your brain and living with ecstasy 25 years between 25 to 50 training to pour that on one person one family one group that is grihastha life then next vanaprastha trying to pour that on animate inanimate objects 
like a, that's why vana prasna means going and sharing it with a, in the forest trying to pour that on animals pour that on trees pour that on whole forest with the nature then sanyas trying to pour that on the whole world you are now trained to pour your ecstasy and compassion on the whole world this is the tradition understand going around i am not against but i want you to understand do not think the indian traditional marriage custom and system was the lifestyle without freedom no there because the other person was not utility we don't need to go around we don't need to seek around we don't need to search i am full all i want is some one person on whom i can pour so that masters are there they will choose that's all the dimension and color of the skin was not involved that is why we don't have a problem we never had a problem of surrendering this freedom to the elders now not only color of the skin even color of the dress mat matters <laughs> the taste matters color of the dress matters because it is going to be utility you are now planning how much maximum i can get out of that person it is all about how much you can get out of that person that is why you have to shop around you have to shop around to get a best deal so naturally if it is going to be a deal you have to shop around in the traditional vedic marriage system it was not deal so you don't need to shop around it was only a training so masters know who should be put next to you so that you can get trained even the attitude was training that is why every time the thought of continuing the marriage only was mothered yesterday sutra if you remember as hen mothers the chicks mother particular knowings and doings in the indian traditional marriage thought of continuing the marriage only was mothered continuously even verbally even verbally they will not tell that i should not live with him no even verbally they will not tell thought of keeping the marriage alive was mothered but now when it is utility shopping around even after a few months when you think the deal was not <laughs> as you expected the thought of divorce is started getting mothered understand the moment you start mothering the thought of divorce you have created the problem for you which thought you mother is the truth we never kept the relationship as a utility part it was more pouring it was more sharing whenever a problem in marriage comes the person only remembers marriage is happened for me to train myself to pour my compassion and expand me it is a test in the marriage system of the west where the dating and deal is signed whenever the problem happens i think i am cheated now i have to stand up i have to put my foot down where will you put already you are down <laughs> where more you will put your foot down where more you will go down i'll put my foot down the whole attitude was different the whole attitude was different the essence base was adding the ananda sutras to life understand adding the essential clarity which straight away brings ecstasy to your life this sutra is a kind of a sutra just simple understanding will awaken the non mechanical parts of your brain and all you need to do is cooperate with it 
and allow that awakening of the non-mechanical parts of your brain to create your day routine. That's all. Understand? With Nitya Sutras, you have to listen, internalize, remember and center yourself every day. It may not need a separate effort, but every moment you have to just remember and bring it back to the center, to that awakening, to that remembrance. Like Ajapa Ajapa, Ananda Ganda, putting your awareness on Anya. There are so many methods. That and all is Nitya Sutra. Next is Dhyana Sutra. Understanding, internalizing, sitting particular time. Half an hour, one hour, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sitting and doing it. Dhyana Sutras. Ananda Sutras. Understand. The very understanding will give you the clarity. The clarity will automatically awaken the non-mechanical parts of your brain. When that awakening happens, a chaos will start happening in your routine. Means your routine will start getting arranged by itself, cooperate with it. That is what I call living enlightenment. If you don't cooperate for the new ecstasy which happened, new awakening which happened, and if you force your old same dull routine on you, you may forget or you may bring your awakening back to same old person. <laughs> back to your dullness and deadness. Here, this Ananda Sutras, does not need your effort. It needs only your cooperation. Listen very intensely and understand. Allow that awakening of non-mechanical parts of your brain to happen now. So that you can cooperate with it. Cooperating means when these understandings happen, the tremendous love, tremendous gratitude, for the master or God or this understanding. If the understand, if the devotion happens even to this understanding, that is the respect to the Veda Mata. That is the respect to the Veda Purusha. Re respect to Veda Purusha means what? Respect to the understanding. Some one thing may start arising. Something may start arising. As a side effect, just cooperate with all these things. That's all. Just go with all these things. You may always like to be around the people who are also in this kind of life. You may always love to talk or listen about this kind of things. Cooperate with it. Cooperating with the awakening which happened in you is what I am calling being a disciple or living enlightenment. Since in truth, in reality, bondage and freedom are relative, these words are only for those terrified with the universe. Understand? These words are only for the people, for those who are terrified with the universe. First line, very powerful line. Bondage and freedom are relative. Only a courageous master can tell this. Because when you are liberated from bondage, you may, may not need master. Fortunately, Shiva did not have disciples who were dating around for master. <laughs> Understand? Just like the, just, the, in the West, just how they date around for a companion, same way the dating around for master also happens. If you are surrounded by the disciples who dated around and found you, you cannot take the risk of giving the ultimate truth to them. Then, <laughs> the deal is over. <laughs> But here, fortunately, Shiva is surrounded by the disciple 
who was in the same mold marriage of the Vedic marriage. See, I gave you the clear difference between the traditional Vedic marriage and the western kind of a marriage and set of mental setup. Same way the guru disciple relationship also. If you are sitting here, all the questions are answered and just you are sitting here to have more and more understanding, like more and more you are you want to pour your gratitude. You are here just because you are gratitude. Is Indian traditional marriage. I am an instrument. I am I happened in your life to train you to pour your gratitude. How the Vedic marriage, the spouse is added to your life so that you will get trained to pour your compassion out on one person. Then you can pour it on the whole world. Same way you will be here. I will be added to your life so that you will be trained to pour your gratitude on me. Then you can pour it on the whole world. It is the, actually the marriage and guru disciple relationship is almost same. How, what idea you have about marriage is going to affect even the idea of guru disciple relationship. The other way, the dating and marrying, that system means you are sitting if with that system, with that understanding, if the guru disciple relationship starts just going around and picking up and finally choosing one. Unfortunately, now we don't have Every Kula Guru, the enlightened Kula Guru, if we had that, we don't need for you to move to other Guru at all. Because we don't have that, we have to now replace. Anyhow, when you date around and find the master and start sitting with him, it is only going to be, you will be sitting as long as all your questions are answered. Not after that, because deal is over. After all the questions are answered, understand, be very clear, understand this word very clearly. After your brain feels it has taken enough, not, don't think the moment your brain feels you have taken enough, you have really taken enough. No. When your brain feels you have learnt enough, then you start thinking, eh, I think I have learnt enough. Then now why should I sit here? I think the deal does not seem to be now anymore giving. Let's break the deal. I think it is too much demanding than giving. Let's break the deal. Enough, bus, diverse will happen. <laughs> and that is what I say, you turn before reaching the goal. <laughs> you turn before reaching the goal. Understand, you hit the red signal, not the goal. <laughs> Sometime, hitting the red signal, you think as a goal. I have seen many seekers who are trained in the mental setup of dating and marrying, will date around and suddenly have a click. I think, oh God, this guy is fresh out of the box. Young master, <laughs> fresh out of the box. <laughs> Surely we can get some new technique, updated version, <laughs> updated ideas. <laughs> and sit and learn. The moment you feel your brain is full, or the moment you think is unique contribution I got. Understand? I don't have any contribution. I want all of you to know and I want this to be in record. I don't have anything unique to contribute. Everything I am expressing is expressed at least 10,000 years ago. I am sure it is expressed much earlier, but we have a record at least 10,000 years ago. If you are here, to find something, unique contribution from me, you are cheating yourself. You are just in wrong place. I neither have something unique to contribute, 
nor claim I have something unique to contribute. If you are here sitting for some unique contribution, you are still dating. You are still sitting with your questions. Any day you think your brain is filled, you are, now any day you feel, ah, how much ideas I can grab, I think I have grabbed. Or your brain will say, I think I learnt everything. When you think you learnt everything, be very clear, you filled your brain, not learnt. Your brain says, no. Whenever your brain is filled, it gives you an idea, you have learnt everything, you have not learnt everything. Your small brain is filled. <laughs> That's all. Then you decide, now it is too much demanding. Why should I wear this mala? Why should I do meditation every day? I have to drive all the way, one hour drive and go and sit there. He comes in his own time. And <laughs> I am sitting in a normal chair. He is sitting in a big throne unnecessarily. Why should it be? You take a U-turn and you mistake the red signal as goal. Red signal is your brain is filled with thoughts, ideas, but your brain tells you you have understood everything. The red signal shows as if it is a goal and you take take you turn the relationship with guru disciple and the marriage both comes from the same attitude if you are sitting here all my questions are answered my brain is full but i am overflowing let me sit i am here around doing whatever i am doing whether i am giving my time or sharing my talent or my treasury, it is out of gratitude. If you are with that attitude, you will see, every day you will be exploring new and new, deeper and deeper things. New, new things will be opening. New, new things will be happening. I will only be an, just an object, a reason, excuse for you to pour your gratitude and love to the whole world. I am like a training object. You will pour it and see. Naturally you will be trained to pour on the community. First master, then community, then the whole world. How it happens in a marriage system? First, the spouse and the family, community, then the whole world. In tradition, we had only two lifestyles. One, the householder lifestyle. The same mold, pouring it on one person, pouring it on community, pouring it on whole world. In the spiritual way, same thing, pouring it on master and pouring it on master's community and pouring it on the whole world. The sannyas and sansar, both life, same attitude and same goal and same ending. That is why we never had a problem with a whole social setup. With the whole social setup. It was such a beautiful tuned truth. Since in truth bondage and freedom are relative, Mahadeva is fortunate. He is having a disciple who has not dated around. Neither for marriage nor for Gurus. She is completely in tune. That is why he is opening and boldly declaring. Bondage and freedom, both are relative. Understand? Both are relative. If you are frightened in the universe, terrified with the universe, only for you these words are required. This universe, now he is giving the next answer, next step. This universe is a reflection of minds. This is the key word. This is the Ananda Sutra. This is the Ananda Sutra. This universe is a reflection of mind. 
your mind reflects on her mind, your mind, his mind reflects on your mind. It is just reflection of minds. Like a, in India, in villages, the, during the festival times, they will sell a small piece of tie. If you put your eye inside and see, rotate, you will see the few pieces of bangles being reflected in three mirrors. It is called kaleidoscopy or something. Ah. <laughs> kaleidoscopy. Kaleidoscopy. Understand? Your life is like the kaleidoscopy. Actually, inside there is only few pieces of bangles. But that two, three piece bangle reflected in the three mirror will look like a big design. Continuous, big design. Same way, here, you have too many mirrors, chaotically placed, not flat, different kinds of <laughs> contours, different kind of mold, different, not only that, many broken. <laughs> many broken. <laughs> to peace, peace. This kind of reflection, your mind is enough chaos and the mirrors are the bigger chaos. The chaos is reflected in chaos. What will you do? Nothing to do, celebrate. <laughs> there is nothing to achieve. Just relax. It may be very strong, anything which creates tightness in you or strong thought in you which you have to remember by force, relax from it. Relax from it. That is what Mahadeva means. This universe is a reflection of minds. When you relax from like from it, anything which creates tightness or stress, if you relax, a unique kind of awakening will start happening and your day-to-day -day routine will go through a big, tremendous balancing. Understand? Not imbalancing. Balancing. As on now it is imbalanced. Chaos. Chaos will fall into order. It will fall into balancing. Cooperating with that balancing is living enlightenment. When that balancing has happened, you are living enlightenment. The word living enlightenment can be practice and achievement. Cooperating when the chaos falls into order. See, every relationship, every activity, whether your profession or life or Business dealing or the uh, personal relationship or anything is reflection of minds. Reflection of minds. That is why even two person cannot sit silently, quietly for two hours. You see in front of the masters thousands of people not only sitting quite as if there is no two mind. I have seen. Not even sm slight movements will be there in the body. Just people are there. Means there is no two mind. Only one person has and he also has no mind. <laughs> and just his words are vibrating, echoing in the empty inner spaces. Sabhava Chinmayanandam Kripa Purnam Jagat Padim Harishad Varkaje Taram Nityananda Gurum Baje Sabhava Chinmayanandam Kripa Purnam Jagat Padim Harishad Varkaje Taram Nityananda Gurum Sabhava Chinmayanandam Kripa Purnam Jagat Padim Harishad Varkaje Taram Nitya
नित्यानंद गुरु बजे स्वभाव चिन्मयानंदम कृपा पूर्णम जगतपति